Okay, so I decided to take a little bit of a video of the next step after the cleaning process, which is gonna be some quick communication followed by a press. So right now I have my press warming up and I just loaded my book into my makeshift humidifier. And basically all this is is a plastic tub. It has two four inch uh, PVC pipes, uh, couplers underneath to kind of use as a platform. And then I have this uh, grating. I'll actually show you some of it right here. This grating is kind of a, a, a permeable uh, level for it to sit on. And then I have that covered by a cheesecloth. And right now the comic's sitting on a backer board with just a center backer board in the middle. And I have a essentially a baby humidifier. Um, the other, so this is not, I'll say this is not the preferred method to do it. This is kind of the, the quick and dirty way. Uh, a lot of people will use natural heat and condensation, so they'll, they'll put uh, a few inches of water in the tub. Then they will leave it in the, a sunlit area overnight for anywhere from 8 to 24 hours to increase the humidity, the relative humidity, to about 99% or so to humidify the book. And all you're trying to do at this step is make the paper more pliable, uh, try to relax those fibers so that when you press it, you can get out some of those deep bends and remove some of the creases. And so that's really an essential step, especially with these older books. With a modern quick press, you don't necessarily need that. Those books are, are relatively new and you're just trying to get out waviness from the production process. Or even with really significant uh, defects, you can try to press it first and then if it doesn't fix it 100%, you can use some humidity where you're gonna apply some steam with a, a steamer. But again, that's that's usually not needed in modern books just because the paper has changed so much. You know, these the paper that uh, were used in these books and uh, Silver Age books are, are a lot different and uh, have a lot, are a lot more fibrous. So I'm gonna put it in here. I usually only leave it for a couple minutes. Again, that's just a baby humidifier or you can look at a um, aromatherapy humidifier of course don't put any uh, oils or anything you want to use uh, distilled water that you get from the store just to make sure that it's nice and clean if you have an RODI unit at home uh, you know I used to be in the aquarium hobby so I I had RODI water on hand I, you could use that as well uh, so I'm gonna turn this on and then we're gonna cover it you have to forgive my one-handed videography and, and narration over here so let's see okay so i have that on i'm going to angle that so it's kind of not misting directly over the book and then i'm going to go ahead and cover the lid and i'm going to seal it okay so we'll let that go for a couple minutes and in the meantime i'll show you the press so i have a Bien Fang, which is uh, a brand that makes dry mount presses. So these presses are usually made for people who are uh, dry mount uh, mounting a picture to a uh, backer board. I don't know the technical terms. So people in the photography industry will know exactly what this is. It's basically for portraits or uh, mounting photos onto backer boards. So they like tack iron them and then they, they mount them using this press. This is really nice because the heat is really stable. Uh, it has a lot of space, so I do two books at a time, which when you're starting out, I certainly do not recommend that. One book at a time. You have to not only be very cognizant of the types of books that you're using, but also the thickness. So I usually only do doubles of the same book. I don't uh, mix and match. Or if I do, I'm very cautious about the size. So these presses um, are very expensive uh, from if you were to buy them full retail, I think they can be anywhere from $1,200 to, to $2,000. Uh, you can also find them secondhand. I found this one from a photographer who was getting out of the business and was looking to offload it. They're very heavy, so or relatively heavy, and you, you the shipping on it would be expensive if you didn't get it lo local. So look at Craigslist, look at OfferUp. Otherwise, there's a whole bunch of different presses that are available for t-shirts that work perfectly well, those clamshell style pr presses that you can get from around $150 to $250. And there's tons of information about using those presses online. So I have this press, I'm gonna open it up. As you can see, I have it turned on right now. It's heating up. Uh, you lift up this lid 
And what I have in here are two uh, steel plates to, to uh, form the bottom. So those are conducted for heat and they are going to work to be able to press basically both sides of the book because if, if not, it just comes with this foam pad, which is what people use for dry mount pressing. So you can see the nice, nice flat surface on the top. These two uh, steel sheets that I polished on the bottom that are very hot right now. If you're getting into this, this is a nifty tool. You're going to need some kind of IR thermometer and you can use that to check the temperature. So you can see right now my temp's at around 152 or so. All right, and then you can also check the top of the, the screen. And that should be a little, little hotter up there, but yeah, 154 or so. So I'm gonna take a little video of me loading the book in there, but this is basically the process. You can put a, a book each on this and I will uh, take a video of loading that and then you basically just close that back on. And then there's a wonderful website, Captain Mike's website, the CPR book that I really love that has times and tables for every type of book, uh, how to make these stacks, which I'm gonna show you. And also, uh, again, like the, the timing is the key, especially based on the different presses. So this guy is getting nice and humidified over there. It's probably about done. And I'm gonna cut the video off and then we'll come back with me loading it. Okay, so now we're finished the humidification process. It was in the press for, or in the humidifier just for probably three, three and a half minutes total while I kind of chatted you with the, with the video. So now I'm gonna load the book in here. I'm gonna start off, uh, I'm gonna put it on the left side. So you guys, let me make sure you guys have a good view of that. Okay, yeah, so I'm gonna put it on the left side over here. And basically you start off with a single layer backer board, shiny side up, okay? And then on top of that, you're gonna have a sheet of uh, SRP paper. So I'm gonna get the book in my hand I've completed the stack, so underneath this I have, under the front cover, a piece of 60-pound, 65-pound cardstock, a, a magazine-sized backer board in the center, 65-pound cardstock behind the back cover. I make sure that it's all snug and, and lined up with the edge of the book. And I'm going to take a piece of silicone release paper, because you don't want the, the book touching the back of that, I'm gonna place that down just like that. So you wanna make sure there's nothing hanging off and that your book is nice and centered on the plate, centered on the backing board. And then we're gonna finish this comic sandwich with another piece of silicone release paper. Again, this is to prevent sticking or any kind of ink transfer. And then another piece of uh, backer board, shiny side down. And we're gonna be very gentle as we close this. You don't want a lot of pressure on this handle. It should close uh, relatively easy. Okay, and so now, again, I mentioned the times kind of depend on the type of book that you're doing, whether you're doing a modern or a silver age. I'm gonna leave this in here for about 15 minutes, uh, 13 to 15 minutes, and then I am going to let it sit for about nine hours or so. I'm going to uh, flip the book at that point to do the back again, do it another 15 minutes, at that same temperature, and then I'm gonna let it rest overnight, and that's really important. If you don't let it rest overnight, the paper is gonna start curling and doing all kinds of crazy things, and you're gonna have ruined your, your nice press that you spent all that time uh, pre preparing for with the cleaning and the humidification process. So this is gonna stay in here. With this book, I'll probably give it two full presses, so I'll probably do front and back. I'll see how it looks. If there's any stubborn areas, I'm gonna break out the, the tack iron. You guys can, can see that. And then um, after that, we'll, you know, we'll try to, like I said, if there's a stubborn bend in the corner of the book, I'll fix that with the tack iron. You guys can see that process. And then uh, we'll do a full press again. And at that point, I'll probably be happy with uh, how everything looks. I'll take some before and after pictures and uh, show you guys what, what uh, the, the entire process can, can do to a book, all right? Okay, here's the post-pressing video. Just pulled it out, this is after its second press, and I'll um, show you each one of the corners of it. So we're gonna get a little close. I should have done this with uh, the first go around, but you remember those deep bends that were in that, those spots by the spine ticks. They got significantly better. Ah. All right. Then we'll look from the side. We'll catch the light and you can just see. Now 
looking pretty good. I'll flip it over and show you the back cover. Okay, here we go. Here's the back cover. Do a little bit of uh, around the world. Even that line went right there was lined up a bit. And we'll catch the angle from the side. I think we did pretty good on this one. All right, well, there you have it. I'm going to stop this video. This is gonna conclude it for the pressing portion of it. And I'm going to restart a new video to show you how to uh, window bag this for signing. All right, see you in a second.